Hey guys, and welcome back to another Byte Brew Unity tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be showing you guys how to implement progression events and custom events into your game. Now, the reason why you guys would want to implement progression events and custom events is so that you guys can track certain stuff that happens in your game that gives you guys a really good details into what your players are doing, when are they doing it, and how well are they doing it. So if you have a level inside your game, you might want to know how well those players are being able to progress through those levels. You might have a boss level that's so hard and so you'll see a spike in time or a dip in users crossing that level to the next level and that can be achieved through Viper's progression event system. So let's first implement the progression event system. So let's go into our game script and as you can see down here we have something called on level failed, on level started, on level completed. These are not methods implemented by Byte Brew, but these are your own methods when you guys are notified when a level is completed, started, or failed, or anything is started, completed, or failed. It doesn't need to be levels. You can do a progression event for your tutorials or whatever you guys want. If you guys have worlds like a Clash Royale game, you guys have different arenas, you might want to know when arena gets started and how long it takes for them to finish an arena or finish, uh, finish a game. So, if you guys want to get started into that, we already imported Viper SDK. If you guys have not imported the Viper SDK into your actual Unity project, there's probably going to be a video linked at the top right corner that will show you how to initialize the Viper SDK. So let's first start with on level started. So in here, as you can see, we have th we have three different parameters: an environment, level, or value. You guys don't need to have these, but we are required for you to have at least two arguments passed to our byte brew methods. So we're going to do new progression event. Now we require byte brew progression status. Since we're on started, let's do started. Environment. As I said before, you guys can do different worlds, different arenas. It could be a tutorial. So. But because this is a level game, we're just going to put it as just Candyland because it's a candy game. And the state you're in is the level that gets passed in. And there you go. You guys can add a, two more arguments, but two different distinct arguments for either it's a string value or float value into it if you guys are trying to track a value within there, but you guys don't need to. But this is just basic progression event and you guys are already tracking the start of a user in a progression event in the candy land so this is when they start a new level now let's go ahead and just take this and they complete a level so let's just go they completed and there you go you guys set up a progression event for when they completed if you guys are doing funneling systems, which Byte Brew does have, we have great funneling systems for seeing where your users fall off, as well as we have a very uh, distinct technology for funneling time and to see how long it takes users for them to finish a level. And in order to achieve those, we need to know when they started, when they completed, and when they failed. So if you guys are doing funneling, make sure you do set up these events. So it's set up for failed. And there you go. You guys are completely done on setting up a progression event. These will be filling up in, into your dashboard and you guys will be able to create funnels off of them. You guys will be able to really grind down into the metrics on how well your game is doing. So now let's go and set up a custom event. Now custom events can help you track simple things. As you can see, if we go to our settings manager, if you guys have users who turn off the music or turn on the music or whatever, you guys might want to know how many people turn off music, how many people turn on music to know maybe players don't like the music, maybe they think it's annoying, something like that. Who knows? So for something this simple as a custom event, let's import the Viper library. And it's going to turn off, so we're going to say Viper. new custom event and the event name is going to be VFX 
off. And wow, there you guys go. That is a custom event getting tracked by this user and you guys will be able to literally go into your dashboard and be able to query your custom events that you guys set up. And it was that easy, that quick. And let's go set up for turn off music. You guys can just copy the line, put off the music and say music off. And there you guys go. You guys already turned off the music. <laughs> well, not turn it off, but you guys are being able to see when the user turns off their music. Now you guys can set up multiple different custom events whenever you guys want to. So you guys might want to implement another custom event that has to do with the user's player level. Now let's just go in and let's just say, let's say you're trying to update the player level somewhere on, on level completed and you want to update their level based off of the value that was given to them. So we would just, you know, pass in the value of whatever it was that was given to them. And this is just to show you guys a simple of how to utilize Viper's custom events. Let's say player level update. And so another part of the new custom events is that you guys can put in either a string or a float value. And this could be if you guys have a equipped weapon system, you guys can update it for a string saying this user equipped the laser sword or lightsaber. but or this user equipped a laser sword. And so, or you can guys do it for a float. So something like player level update, you wanna know what value the user got updated to so you guys can set the value. And there you go. In the, in the explore page in the dashboard, you guys will be able to query player level updates of how much users player level gets updated. And a lot of this can help you guys dive deeper into your data as well as know where your users are loving the game or were they not liking the game and how you guys can help your game to be the best of what it can be. So that is how you implement Viperu custom events and progression events really easily, one-liners, no hassle, no matter what. Thank you guys for joining us on this Viperu Unity tutorial. I hope to catch you guys later.